Hello, Anne. Steve, how's Laura? Making wonderful progress, I'm happy to say. Oh. Steadily improving. Hello, Steve. I was hoping I'd find you. Do you have some time, please? Absolutely. Could we step into the lounge? Of course not. This isn't an easy admission for me to make, but I must. Admission concerning what? Sit down, will you, Steve? There's no sense whatsoever me trying to fill you in on the background of this because the chances are it's going to sound like an excuse and that's the last thing that I want it to be. The fact is, for personal reasons, I deliberately tried to change the hardwood board's mind about Rick's appointment. What? Helen, I'm shocked to hear you say such a thing. I said it wasn't an easy admission to make. But following that, I also must tell you that um, I am doing everything in my power to undo any of the harm that I have done. And that also includes dealing with those personal feelings that caused them in the first place. How do you mean? Well, I've already spoken to Larry Forsythe, and I have told him in no uncertain terms that I still believe that Rick is the best man for the job. I see. Larry has promised to take another vote with the board and see whether they'll reconfirm our original offer to Rick. That is the easy part, Steve. Go on. If you want to replace me in this project now, I'll certainly understand why. Well, I don't think there's any need to do that, Alan. You've been very honest with me, and I, I know the courage it took. Just as long as you've gotten hold of those feelings that were responsible for it. Now, uh, what about the bi-monthly reports the board insisted on? They're no longer necessary. Oh, good. I know Rick will be very relieved to hear that. One thing more, Steve. I do want Rick to hear about this from me first. I'm going to try and get together with him tomorrow. At the same time, I will tell him that the changes that I made in his second report were minimal. I must say, Alan, I, I admire your guts. It's the least I can do to put things right. I only hope he's as understanding as you've been. Sensible that Tracy would go to such lengths to destroy your marriage with Alan, even though she finally admitted it to me. My own daughter! But, Lila, look, I didn't even want to say anything about it. The fact is, I gave Tracy the ammunition. Everything she needed just by lying to Alan all those weeks. Well, as well as I know Tracy, I still find it shocking. And poor Alan, he thinks he's lost you forever now. Oh, Monica, that can't be true. Well, Lila, you know, sometimes th things happen when you're apart. Uh, things that just make it impossible to go back together. Darling, life is one long series of happenings that change people's lives. But if two people really want to make that relationship work, it can. No matter what happens along the way, I know that. Just not quite that simple. Monica, when I asked you to meet me here this morning, I told you that there was a part of my life that I wanted to share with you in the hopes that it might help you Find your way back to Alan. Yes, you said it was something that, that you'd never told either Alan or Tracy. What is it? <laughs> Lyle, I can't imagine anything like... But anything happening that would keep you two apart, even temporarily. It's true, Monica. And during that time, I was tempted more than once to ask him for a divorce, in spite of the children and their welfare. What could have happened that would, that would make you even consider a divorce? Well, darling, fortunately this is something that you won't have to face with Alan, but Edward always had an eye for beautiful women. I knew this before I married him, but I thought I could live with it, but I was wrong. You mean he was unfaithful to you? Oh, more than once, dear. And one day a well-meaning friend came to me and told me that Edward had a mistress and that this time it was more serious than his other flirtations. Well, did you confront him with this? Well, of course I did, darling. Well, and he... I mean, he wouldn't give her up? Well, I'm afraid that it was a rather more complicated than Edward just going to this woman and telling her that it was all over between them. Why? Well, you see, my dear, 
she gave him a son. Oh, would you do me a favor and make sure that Scotty's tie is straight? <laughs> he doesn't wear one very often, and I always end up fixing it for him before we leave the house. Well, consider it done. Oh, would you give him a message for me? What? Please tell him that I don't want him coming back here after the reception to see me. He has a lot of studying to do, and, and that comes first. He can see me tomorrow. Now, the tie I can handle. Telling Scotty that he can't come back here and see you, that is a whole nother story. But I will give him the message. Good. Most important thing to me right now is Scotty's graduation. Because after he's out of school, we can be married. Oh, you sound pretty confident. Oh, I am. I'm sure that the only reason my father wouldn't give us permission was because of all the problems that he and mother were having in their marriage. But now that they're back together again, I'm sure he's going to approve. That's wonderful news. Monica, haven't you noticed? Notice what? Ever since my operation, I've noticed that my parents are starting to look happy again, you know, like they used to. And this morning, my mother told me that whatever happened between them was in the past. And, and she seemed really hopeful that her marriage was going to work again. Well, listen, my darling, um, I have to get back to Gail, so I'm going to have to start helping her with the wedding. Wait a minute. I, I just have one more thing that I have to tell you. Well, Laura, I really do. I have Please, to go. Please, Monica, you of all people have to know this. Why? Because I blamed you all along for the fact that my parents were sleeping in separate bedrooms. Look, Laura, I Monica, have to run. Monica, my mother told me this morning that my father moved out of the guest room and he's back in with her again. Isn't that the greatest news? Look, I'll, I'll give Scotty your message, okay? Thank you. Uh... stop in the lobby here and call you tell you I'm uh, on my way back to your place. But it's my wedding day, not yours. I don't understand why you sound so frantic. Well, it's uh, just been one of those days, I guess. Well, didn't you talk with Lila Help this morning? No. No, it didn't. And things have been downhill ever since. I'm sorry. Look, Monica, could, could I ask you a favor? Yesterday, Peter Taylor and I were talking about the wedding, and Alan was with me, and I, I felt kind of embarrassed, you know, because Lee and I had originally asked him to be a witness for us before you two separated. Oh, the Gail, look, I don't, uh, I don't want you to feel that way. What's the favor? Well, would you mind, I mean, could I call him now and ask him to still come to the wedding? Yes, of course. Uh, I know he'd be hurt if he wasn't included, and no matter what's happened between us, I don't, uh, I don't want to hurt him. Good, then I'll call him right now. And before I hang up, uh, I want you to know, by the time I get to your place, I'm going to be in a lot better spirits. I won't let anything spoil the wedding of my best friend today, I promise you. Nothing could spoil today. <laughs> Listen, you just get over here quick, okay, and, and drive carefully. Bye. Bye. Well, good night, Jerry. See you now. Have a nice time at the wedding, Dr. Cornelius. Thank you. Monica. Oh, well, yes. Are you all right? I was worried after I talked to you this morning. Well, I'm fine, Rick. I'm just in a terrible hurry. I just want to tell you how I heard pleased I am that you and Alan are going to... Look, if, if I don't get to Gail's right now, I mean, she's going to kill me. So, uh, please, excuse Ma me. for letting me come to the wedding? I had nothing to do with it. Yes, you did. If you hadn't approved, Gail wouldn't have called me. Well, I didn't... I didn't want you to be disappointed. Oh, I was hoping it meant a sign of encouragement. Look, this is not the time to talk about anything when this one here is scared to death we're going to be late. <gasps> yes, Alan, I really am kind of anxious. Could we get Yes, going? absolutely. I don't want you like that. Come right. on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> do I have to... Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Go on, go on, go on. Hurry up the rings, please. Now, if you will take these rings, place them on each other's finger, and repeat after me. 
accept this ring accept this ring as a symbol of my undying love as a symbol of my undying love and now that the power invested in me by this state i happily and very proudly pronounce you husband and wife will you make this your lovely bride You're supposed to be looking at the cake, not each other. <laughs> Brian, I can't help it. She is too beautiful, and she's my wife. Okay. Hello. Um, Leslie, Rick, um, this is Judge Whitaker. This is Dr. Leslie Weber, Dr. Rick Weber. Uh, Whitaker, perform the ceremony. Oh, it must have been wonderful. They are such a gorgeous couple. Well, I didn't make Mrs. Baldwin until today, but I've known Lee for a long time. We were classmates in law school. I didn't. He's a wonderful boy. Yes. A fine gentleman. Yes, he's alive. Helen, I'm sorry I didn't have time to see you today, but I definitely want to get to it tomorrow. Don't you say, Wenrick? There are so many things that I need to explain. I'm sure there are. I'm so glad you could come. We wouldn't have missed it for anything in the world. May I kiss you, Brian? Well, of course, I'm not the jealous type. Yet. Oh, good. Uh, give him another hour. Thank you. Best of everything. Thank you, dear. Hello, Steve. Congratulations. Oh, I know you're going to hear this all afternoon, but I can't think of two people who belong together more than you do, and I want to wish you all the happiness in the world. Oh, thank you. Where's Audrey? She's coming in. Oh, uh, she had to go with Shane. She'll be along shortly. Oh, now that anyone has their buckling, yeah. except for Lee and myself with our straight punch, who's going to propose a toast? Oh, uh, Brian, uh, let's wait for Scotty. He, he wanted to make the official toast. Then how about an unofficial one first? Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, a toast to love and the institution of marriage and what it can do for two people who truly belong together. Uh, oh, thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do I take it as a hopeful sign just being included here? Give me a chance, Mark. Come back to me. Take me back. Let me prove to you how much I love you. I've been doing a lot of thinking, and uh, I'm willing to at least give it a try. You won't be sorry. I love you so very much. You made me so happy. I hope you'll always be that way. I know I will. I've given up hope. I felt so lost and desperate. Uh -huh. I think now that feeling. grateful I am for you giving me this second chance. Well, I, I don't want gratitude. If anything, if anything, I promise that things will be different. You will. I've already spoken to Peter Taylor, and I'm sure I'm going to be able to come to terms with my jealousy once and for all. I hope so. I hope so for your sake. For our sake. I'm going to make it all up to you. I promise I will. Looking in your eyes, I don't know how I could have ever been fool enough to believe that you would have ever been unfaithful to me. Well, I would say it looks like maybe Alan and Monica are solving their problems. I said that. Mm, I just want everybody in the whole room to be as happy as I am. Hello. Hello. Hi there. Isn't this a beautiful reception? Oh, isn't it? Thank you. Lucky, but there's so many people still not here. The Taylors and Audrey. Yeah, not to mention my son, who dashed out of the courthouse as soon as we had said I do and rushed to the hospital to see your daughter. 